Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about the shoulder joint and more specifically about the rotator cuff muscles within the joint. They have a high incidence of injury and this is due to their important role in stabilizing the shoulder joint. I've broken the video down into four parts to make it a little bit easier to remember. One is going to be the function of the rotator cuff. Two is how your rotator cuff typically gets injured. Three, do you have a rotator cuff injury? And four, how we can strengthen and rehab the muscle. Let's get started. Okay, so the main function of your rotator cuff is to hold your upper arm inside in your shoulder joint. Your upper arm is called the humerus and it fits into your shoulder joint which is called the glenoid. This glenoid joint is quite small in comparison to the size of the head of the humerus, therefore making the joint very unstable. Your rotator cuff has to work very hard to lock down and stabilize this joint. Anytime you go to move your hand, your rotator cuff muscles work very hard to ensure that the head or the humerus does not fall out of the shoulder joint. The rotator cuff muscles are also uh, involved in movement of the shoulder, more of which I will talk about towards the end of the video when I go through some of the strength and rehab exercises. So now that we know the function of the rotator cuff, and how important it is to maintain in a healthy shoulder, it is pretty clear how it can get subject to injury itself. It has an important role in locking down the shoulder and it is used in daily movements, so it's been used quite a lot. There are three main uh, types of injuries that occur uh, in the rotator cuff. One is a tendinopathy, two is a impingement, and three is a tear to the rotator cuff. Of the three, a tendinopathy seems to be the most common. Uh, it is due to overuse of the muscle. So any time that we move our arm, the rotator cuff muscles are working to lock down the joint, therefore they are subject to getting overused. In a golf swing, for example, any time you lift your arm, you're abducting the arm and externally rotating it. The arm is in a compromised position, so although even the rotator cuffs are making those movements happen, they're also locking down the joint. They are subject to overuse in this situation, may get a little flared up and cause a dull ache or pain. The second most common type of injury would be an impingement of the rotator cuff. This happens when the rotator cuff tendons uh, rub off the acromion, which is the bone just here on the top of your shoulder. Anytime you elevate your arm upwards, the tendon may flick over this bone. If this happens on a regular basis, the tendon is going to get flared up, it's going to emit some pain. Then the third most common uh, injury to occur in the rotator cuff would be a tear. A tear is less likely, a trauma is going to almost have to occur, or even if you just overuse it completely. So if you're doing reps and reps and reps of something, it'll eventually give up and little tears will start occurring. The more common type of situation where this will uh, happen is if you fall onto an outstretched arm, you've gone as far as dislocating your arm and the rotator cuff tendons weren't able to hold it in place and they end up tearing. So how do you know if you've got a rotator cuff issue? So some of the common symptoms that you would find with rotator cuff injuries is going to be pain in the shoulder blade area, which is right in here, or pain out the front, or just to the side of the shoulder. You have tendons just out the front here. If you palpate deep into the joint, you will flick across it. And there's another one just out at the side here. Give a feeling there. If they're a little bit tender, you might have a little problem in your uh, rotator cuff. Uh, another common symptom would be having difficulty moving the arm, especially above 90 degrees, which is from, from here up. Uh, pain at night time, uh, feeling of cracking or popping sensation in the shoulder, and a feeling of instability. Also due to the fact that the shoulder moves the arm in certain directions, these movements are going to be a little bit problematic. I'm going to go through these now as well in the next topic. And lastly on exercise and rehab, uh, we now know that the main function of the rotator cuff is to stabilize the joint. So all your rehab and exercise should primarily look to challenge in this movement. Some of the exercises that I'm going to do here now are going to start off with nice, easy, stability exercises for your shoulder and they're going to increase with difficulty. Here they are.
guys went okay and they weren't too difficult they're really going to just test the stability of the shoulder and they're going to be good for shoulder health next up now we're just going to train the movements now as we know the rotator cuff also moves the arm uh, in certain directions primarily external rotation which is moving your hand away from your body and internal rotation which is moving it in towards your body or medially so we're going to train these movements now the, again they're going to start off nice and easy with the arm in by the body the shoulder joint is nice and stable here but as we move the arm away from the body these exercises get a little bit tougher why because the stability of the shoulder is a little bit more challenged as we move in and out through rotation give them a go and see how you get on